I'm a singer, a songwriter, and a music producer. I travel around the world with my music, but Singapore is where I call home. It's a small place, but there's so much for me to learn about this tiny island and all it has to offer. Nature is the best physician. Hippocrates, founder of medicine, said this 2,000 years ago. And he was right. Today, we have the science to back him up. When out in nature, our stress hormones and blood pressure are reduced. Our immune system and even our self-confidence get boosted. Join me in reaping the benefits of nature through music and dance out in the open. I am a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. See how nature helps those who need it the most. But first, it's time for some entertainment. I'm at the Dairy Farm Nature Park with Zat. Zat has a very unusual hobby, ant keeping. And he has brought me here to seek out these creepy crawlies. Dairy Farm Nature Park borders Bukitima Nature Reserve. The world's first tropical dairy farm was actually set up here, hence the name. The cows are long gone, but the healthy secondary forest that grows here is now home to some of nature's smallest wonders. Do you know that there are 300 to 500 species of ants in Singapore? I only know the ones that bite me. There are big ants, small ants, red ants, black ants, and all of them are a nuisance to me. Well, I used to think that, but maybe over here will change your perspective. Ants, come out, come out. <laughs> come out to play. Daniel, have you seen an ant that is golden in colour? Nope. So this particular species called the Polyrus bakari, it has a golden sheen that helps them to shield off the UV rays that will be harmful to the ants. It's not a bitey guy. You're not a threat to me. You can't bite me. I'm not scared of you ants. Here you go. Not scared. <laughs> Most people see ants as pests. What about ants fascinates you? Back in 2015, I was very depressed. And before I made my suicidal move, a Korean serendipitously flew into my mouth. A lot of people don't believe, but I think it has a very strong message. Do not give up on any hope. People look at the ants as pests. People look at me as pests. So, I can feel there's a similarity between me and the ants. Where I progressively change my attitude. Even by caring for the ants, I also learn a lot of patience. And I appreciate small little things too. I'm an advocate for not only ant keeping, but to show our native species. Because you look around in Singapore, there's a lot of beautiful things around, but not a lot of people can really observe or get in touch with it. You just need to open your eyes and see. Zad took his love for ants one step further by setting up an ant museum in 2020. A first in Asia and home to 50 species native to Singapore. This is the Tetraponera rufu nigra, also known as a slender ants. It's a species... Oh, Daniel, don't do that. They have very potent sting. Some people, they might be allergic to the toxin and it causes death each year. These cause death? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for stopping me. <laughs> and keeping is a popular hobby, especially during this COVID period. Many people are looking for ways to bring nature into their homes. I'm going to introduce you the biggest ant in Singapore. One of the biggest ants in the world too. The Daniel Sid of ants. Dinomermax gigas, also known as the giant forest ant. Check it out. Ooh, that is a big boy. Where do you find these ants? Most ant keepers will find them under HDBs, sometimes inside your house. After a rainstorm, the queen ant or the virgin princess will fly from the parent colony to mate. This is the time where we will catch them. So you need not to go into nature reserve or parks to poach them. It's actually illegal. Take a look at this. The trap jaw ant. It can open its mandible up to 180 degrees. And when it snaps, it is faster than the blink of an eye. So when it meets, any danger or a barrier, 
it will propel itself out of danger. Fight me! <laughs> and what's the next best thing after catching ants? Creating formicariums or artificial ant nests like these. I'm gonna try and make one. Basically, there's two important elements in a formicarium. One is the chamber nest, where the queen ant and the worker ants will take care of each other and its young. The other element is the outworld, where they forage and dump their carcasses or trash. So they actually like take out the trash themselves? Yes, ants are actually very clean creatures. It's time to design the outworld. First, I pour a mixture of grout and plaster that will harden quickly. This holds down the decorative add-ons so the ants won't be able to carry them into the nest. I also factor in tunnels with ventilation for these busy bodies to move around. Some species, they require a much smaller chamber nest. So you have to really know what kind of ants you're keeping in that formicarium. I'll give them a nice little picket yeah. fence. It's like plating fine dining. Would you like to work in the museum? You know what, if music doesn't work out. <laughs> Making a formicarium is really like building a tiny world for these small but super intelligent creatures that can really make you feel special. I mean, it starts with a single ant, a queen, and she builds an empire. Girl power. I used to think ants were just pests, but it's amazing to learn how much these tiny creatures actually impact the world. Nature is all-embracing. Next, I experience how nature helps to lift the spirits of a community. Whoa, check that out. It gets me relaxed. That really helps with my mental health. It's said that gardening adds years to our lives and life to our years. But what happens when we're injured or frail and unable to handle the labour of gardening? That's where therapeutic gardening comes in. Jana works at this rehabilitation centre run by Tang Tok Seng Hospital. She had a hand in setting up this therapeutic garden, which has become part of the recovery process for some patients. What makes this garden a therapeutic garden? This garden has multiple elements to it that will allow uh, the end user to interact with, like, such as the different sites, the colours that we have, and sometimes, you know, the different textures of the plants, the smells as well. We were very intentional with the plants that we selected. Jana and the team of occupational and physical therapists also designed a variety of craft activities that revolve around the mini garden. Today, I'm joining Yang Yang. She's one of the garden's latest beneficiaries. Uh, Yang Yang. Uh. Okay, Yang Yang, this is Daniel. Yang Yang is making a lavender scented pouch. Okay, and what she's doing right now is actually preparing the materials, cutting the dried lavender leaves into smaller pieces. And what she will be doing later is to add it in together with the rice into the pouches. All right, so what am I going to be doing? You're going to do a botanical printing, and we actually need Yang Yang to help us with this task. I will be decorating a tote bag using rail leaves and flowers, and Yang Yang is using her good taste to pick out the plants for me. I want butterfly flower. Okay. Oh, well, you actually know the name, huh? Good job. I want some some big leaves. Some big leaves. There's a lot of big leaves How here. About that. The red one. This one, is this okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, I want one thing of the The curry plant? Yeah. Okay. Yan Yang, are you new to gardening? Yes. I didn't try any garden before, and I only bought fresh flowers from the shops. Had you heard of therapeutic gardening before this? No, never. So was it very surprising, all the different activities you can do here? Oh, yes, I'm surprised, and it's really interesting. There are some 20 plants in this therapeutic garden, all edibles, like the butterfly sorrel that can be added to salads. Patients partake in a range of activities like plant growing, harvesting, cooking, and arts and crafts. 
Okay. Do you know what you're supposed to do? You can pick whatever leaves or flowers that Yang Yang has selected for you, and you're going to make a design on this. So you can arrange it how you want it to be. This is why I'm terrible at doing this. You can look down and look at your shirt for some inspiration. The activities that can be carried out here can help improve their physical function. Depending on the activities that you select, uh, the plants that you choose, it can help them improve seating tolerance, standing tolerance, even standing balance. And depending on the tools that you use, it can even help with um, improving of the upper limb strength and coordination. For some patients, it can help improve their cognitive function, their attention span. Discover a new secret. Okay. And so just hearts can make well, butterflies. Check that out. Okay. She's actually quite good. I'm going to share that to my patient next time. <laughs> okay, so where is that butterfly going to be? He's flying towards this, this flower. What's your favourite thing about doing these activities? It gets me relaxed. Because, you know, when I am lying in the bed, I'm worried about my future. And that really helps with my mental health. That's something I can relate to. Because when I was in the hospital, in the ICU, my bed wasn't even close to a window. It was the closest bed to the door, and there was no nature around me. When I come out, I can see other patients and other therapists. That makes me feel that I'm not alone in this recovery. I think that's enough, or we should put in everything? Mm. Put in everything, right? Yes. Since it's all your hard work. Yes, all my hard work. Oh, I really like this. <laughs> Really like it's this. coming. It's coming out more. Lavender fried rice. Lavender fried rice. Okay, so, so all you need to do right now, right, is knock your hearts out. So you can start from the smaller one, okay, and then let's see how the color comes out. Okay, it's time to show your muscles. This sounds like a very good threat. <laughs> that I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna smash the color out of you. You can lift it up, if you can see. Oh my goodness, that is a very nice stain. It looks like a purple heart. Aha, uh -huh. is it the big reveal right now? Yes. Are you ready? Whoa, check that out. This really came out really well, actually. This, this other butterfly is beautiful. <laughs> well done. I can't draw to save my life, but today I found a cheat code using actual leaves and flowers as like a stencil. Being around nature can really brighten up someone's mood so much. I was surprised how quickly Yan Yang warmed up and was joking around with us, playing around, even bossing us around at times. There's a social aspect to mental health and recovery, and activities like this really help. This is therapy that doesn't feel like therapy. Next up, I head outdoors for some peace and serenity. Very slowly, come back to your body. Growing up, I didn't set out to be a musician. What put me on this journey was actually a long hospital stay. I suffered from life-threatening complications after a surgery. While recovering, I discovered my passion for music. I healed while learning how to play music, and it's no exaggeration to say that music is my medicine. So when I heard about sound healing, I thought I must give it a try. about sound healing is um, you got to enter with it with an open mind. What do you need to do during a sound healing? Nothing. You just lie there and allow your heart and your mind to be relaxed and just go with the flow of the sounds and see where it leads you. It's time for some good vibes. Taking a deep breath in and out. You enter into your mind's eye, into a beautiful space in nature. 
to understand how sound healing works, you need to understand that we are all energy, everything is energy, and we all have a unique vibrational frequencies. When we are vibrating not in alignment, like we are out of tune, uh, we will feel this ease. So we will feel stress, insomnia, anxiety, depression, or even sometimes physical ailments might surface. So just like an instrument, you work better if you're in tune? Yeah, in tune, yes, correct. Sound healing practitioners believe that we feel unwell when our bodies vibrate at low frequencies. So instruments with higher frequencies are used to raise our vibrational energy. This is called entrainment. We are doing this outside today instead of indoors. How does this change the experience? Well, for one thing, we get extra soundscape layers from the wind, the rustling of the leaves, the birds chirping. So when you tune in and you sharpen your senses, you are more invigorated. So that sense of invigoration is what we're looking for. I cannot believe that I actually fell asleep. But Joey says this is common, I swear. Very slowly, come back to your body. You may gently roll your body to your right side and lie there for a little while. When you feel ready, you may slowly sit up. This was a very unique experience. I'm not someone who's very spiritually grounded, but I can't deny a sense of feeling closer to nature after this experience. The start, it was really hard for me to visualize anything in my head because when I go to sleep, I don't even have dreams. But towards the middle, I did feel like I very much settled into my space, found a lot of relaxation with all the different sounds, It really does feel very different to be out here in nature playing music. Yeah, sound and music can bring us to a different level when we're in nature. Yeah. There's actually one more event I would like to invite you to. It's called Secret Sunrise. All right, cool. Wake up early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's 6 a.m. now. I'm a night owl, so I'm not usually awake at this time. It is comforting to hear the sound of the waves to feel the breeze, but that's not what I came for. I'm here for something called the secret sunrise. Daniel, this is Laura, my long-term collaborator. Yeah, we've been doing a lot of sound, music, and movement collaborations together. Yeah, magical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Laura has been leading secret sunrise sessions for the past two years in Singapore. What exactly am I headed for? I hope I won't be in the dark for long. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Secret Sunrise is a global movement to share joy with the world. And so what we do is um, start everyone out mindfully. We've got a rocking playlist and start people connecting to themselves, connecting to nature and this beautiful place that we have here. Our beautiful theme today is nature heals. And what better way to be in a space of nature than with the ocean, the grass, the palm trees, saying good morning, I see you, and what a wonderful world. And really breathe it in as your body starts to move. My back aches. I feel like an old man. Secret Sunrise actually originated in Zimbabwe. Laura, who's from South Africa, has been doing this for years. I don't know what's going on. I am a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Why don't I have wings? They have cool wings. I want wings. Give me wings. Why do something like this specifically at sunrise? So it's the golden hour. <laughs> and it's part of the magic of starting out when everything is quiet. 
the sunrise is one of the easiest ways for us to connect to nature. So by bringing in movement, connecting to our own bodies, connecting to nature, connecting to each other, it starts to bring about a big gratitude for nature itself. Some, some Kung Fu moves going on. <sighs> Distraction. So I realised how ridiculous this must look because there are some people there just staring at us and they can't hear this music. So yes, it seems very, very weird. But you know what? Hello, people. How was this experience for you? Just being a part of the elements and in a wide open space, it just gives this whole different feeling and it's just different energy, so yeah. This community makes me feel really good about myself and it's nice to get dance with like-minded people who just want to start their day on a positive note. I am not a dancer. It was so awkward for me to be in a public space expected to just ham it up and dance. I was worried that people passing by is going to judge me. But as I looked around, everyone was enjoying themselves completely free and just vibing with each other. And I think that gave me a little bit of courage to start moving a little bit more. All my worries, all my problems, my aches and my pains, all the noise from my brain got drowned out by the music. Now that was worth waking up for. <laughs> To be healed and nurtured in nature can mean slowing down for the littlest of joys. But that's not the only way nature comforts. Being active and engaged in all the sights and sounds of nature is also a path to living life fully in the moment. Daniel, what are you making? It's gonna be a, a robot dog. It's half robot, half dog. Yay! This one, mean. Peppermint. This is laksa leaves. I know the smell. Oh, my eyes. Oh, nice. Perfect. Easy. Best of all, the riches of nature are often not only to the able-bodied, but also the very young and the frail. Nature can truly touch our soul in unexpected ways.